faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore is it is of faith that it might be by grace, to the end of the promise may be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the, the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offences and was raised again for our justification. Amen. Very good study there. And we saw last week how that God was using the illustration of David and Abraham to show that no one can be saved by keeping the law. And when you understand why no one can be... Un no one can be saved by keeping the law. It's not only to understand how God saves now, but how God saved in the past, and how God say, will save in the future. Because it's important to understand you're either trying to be saved, or you're trusting to be saved. And there's a big difference between trying your best and simply trusting. And it's interesting that we're going to look today at the promise that God made to Abraham. And because it, I believe it's one of the biggest miracles in the Bible, outside of the Lord Jesus Christ and the miracles he did, the, the, the death, burial, and resurrection. Because when you think of it, God, in order to show his promise to Abraham, said to him, I'm going to give you a son. But wait. Wait. Abraham was 100 years old, just about. And Sarah was 90 years old. And God said to Abraham, that I'm going to show you so much that I can keep my promises that I'm going to give you a son when you're 100. Now, I think I know Debbie enough to know that if she were to, and it's not likely to happen because, well, if she were to get pregnant... <laughs> At her age, she'd probably kill me. <laughs> but can you imagine someone coming up to a hundred-year-old man and saying, Abraham, I know you've believed me and you've trusted me, and I'm going to demonstrate that faith and that trust by giving you a son when you're a hundred years old. Now, God who can do that can do anything. Amen. 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 And it all comes down to the faith of Abraham, not in Abraham, but his faith in God. And it's not how much faith you have or don't have, it's who do you have your faith in that makes the count. Amen. So if you look at verse number 13, it says, For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of of faith. So God made the promise to Abraham not on the basis of the law because he was there 500 years before the law was given. So he wasn't keeping the law. He was exercising faith in what God had said. And all through the Bible you'll find that there are, that there are people who want to keep rules and requirements rather than exercising faith because Exercising faith is very difficult. It's easy to keep rules. It's easy to say, well, the Ten Commandments. I'm reminded of that man who came up to the Lord Jesus Christ and said, what, what sh shall I do that I might inherit eternal life? 
And Jesus said to him, Thou knowest the commandments, keep the law. And he says, and, and he, he said, I've kept all these from my youth up. He thought he was in with a shout. And then Jesus touched his money. <laughs> and the Bible says he went away sorrowful. Because you see, the law will give you blessings. It will give you uh, 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 health and happiness and holiness even. But it cannot save anyone. As we saw before, it's simply a, a mirror. And the reason why the law cannot save us is because it goes against the constant of God's promises. Now, there are some constants in this universe at this time. The speed of light, relatively constant at this time. There are all kinds of uh, uh, constants that we use in our daily life, in electricity, in, in magnetism, in, in, in gravity, and all these things that we know of. But the one constant that shows that you cannot be saved by the law is because it goes against the promise of God. That's what God is saying here in verse number 13. For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. As we, said, as we said last week, there are two ways you can have righteousness. You can have your own righteousness, which is not very good. All our righteousness, the Bible says, are filthy rags. Uh, the Bible says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, no one. You can depend on your righteousness, which will never get you to heaven because we're tainted by sin. Or you can, by faith, have the imputed righteousness of Christ that was given to Abraham. The righteousness of faith. And that righteousness doesn't come under the law. It doesn't come because of a change of behavior. It doesn't come because of a change of location. It comes from believing God. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, Abraham believed God. It not only goes against the constant of God's promise, it goes against the contrast of law and faith. It says, for if they which are of the law be heirs, verse 14, for, uh, uh, for if they which, which are of the law be heirs, now notice this, faith is made void and the promise of none effect. Turn a couple of pages over to the book of Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, and this, this is so important. Galatians chapter 2, and we'll read verse 20 and 21, which says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, notice this in verse 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So if you think, that you can be righteous through the law, then Christ's death is vain. That's why I believe that you're saved by faith today, you are saved by faith in the past, in the Old Testament, and you'll be saved by faith alone in the future, in the tribulation. Because if you substitute law and works and faith, you're making the death of Christ in vain. It's one or the other. It's not both. You can't have both. You can't have law. You can't have faith and works and the death of Christ. It's either faith which exalts the death of Christ or faith and works, works which exterminates the death of Christ. That's why when people say, well, in the tribulation, you've got to keep the law. But if you keep the law, you are nullifying the death of Christ. That's very important to understand. If you, keep the, if you say that you keep the law to be saved, or you have faith and works, if you keep any part of the law in order to be saved, you nullify the death of Christ. Now, you can keep the law. Keep the law is good. As a Christian, we should be righteous and holy. We, we should be helping. We should be a blessing. We should strive to live a righteous, godly life in this world to the best of our ability. 
But if we say, I have faith and works to be saved, we've nullified the death of Christ. Yeah. You see how that's blasphemy? Mm -hmm. We're saying to Jesus, you might have died on the cross, but what you did wasn't good enough. Yeah. That to me is a horrible thought. Yeah. And those who say, well, in the tribulation, you're saved by faith and works, are saying what Jesus did isn't enough. Is the blood of Christ sufficient in the tribulation as it is now? Of course it is. Book of Revelation talks about they're washed in the blood. We sang that song this morning. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? That's why it says in Romans chapter 4, verse 14, and the law is not faith. No, sorry, uh, the law is not, um, chapter 3, chapter 4. It says, uh, I'll get there eventually. Okay. Helps me in the right book. <laughs> verse 14, which says, For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void. This is an important point to understand. If people say you're saved by works, by righteousness of the law, by keeping the law, by saying faith and works and faith and the law, you've made faith void. In other words, God's saying, you've, 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 you've broken it. It can't be. There's a contrast here between faith and works. In other words, trying to work your way to heaven by trying nullifies trusting. You're either trying or trusting. You cannot do both. And you know, you, you know how it is people oftentimes will say, well, you say, do you know for sure that you're going to spend eternity in heaven? Well, I hope so. I'm doing my best. I'm trying. No, 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 no. It's trusting. This is amazing to think about. In order for God to illustrate how faith works, he told Abraham and gave him a promise that was beyond his ability to do. I can imagine. In fact, the Bible says when Sarah heard, she laughed. She laughed. And I can imagine Abraham going to the tent and saying, Sarah, God has told me you're going to get pregnant. And we're going to have a son and we're going to call him Isaac. <laughs> I can imagine the response that Sarah gave. But you see, God was doing that to prove a point to Abraham that he could be trusted. Yeah. Amen. Salvation is on the basis of trusting, not trying. It's faith, not works. Grace, not law. Belief, not behavior. It's about who you believe. That Abraham couldn't do... It was impossible for Abraham to manufacture this in any way, it was his belief, not his behavior, Amen. that made the difference. Yeah. That's the foundation of all God gives us. Mm. Oftentimes, we think if we're a good Christian, God will bless us. But how many times has God blessed you when you didn't deserve it? Yeah. Amen. How many times has God been good to you and me when we did not deserve it? The Bible says in the book of, the book of Romans chapter 2, it's the goodness of God that leadeth thee to repentance. Mm -hmm. How many times has God been good, mm -hmm. gracious, yep. when we didn't deserve it? Yeah. That's grace. Amen. Grace is unmerited, undeserved favor. And as I said last week, no one's, there's not going to be two places in heaven, worksville and faithsville. Those who are there by faith and works, or works, and those who are there by faith, all receive the promise by faith. And here's the reason why, because the law brings condemnation to lawbreakers. Verse 15, because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not, not only that which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. You see, the law informs us of our condition. Now, I remember when, when I would do something at school that was bad, and the, the teacher would send a note home. I tried to make sure that note never got home. <laughs> 
Because I knew what happened once that note got home. But my mother would find out, and then my father would find out, and I would be, I would be in pain. I know that's old-fashioned and, you know, not happening today. But that's how it was when I grew up. And you see, the law informs us that we're sinners. That's why it says there, because the law worketh wrath. People say, you say, well, I'm doing the best I can. Wait a minute, you're depending on something that's going to bring you wrath, not grace. As I said before, when someone stands before the judge, they don't want what the law says. They want mercy. Amen. And every sinner who comes to God has to call out, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. They have to accept that they're a sinner. Amen. The law undermines, the law not only undermines faith, but it underlines failure because the law shows us we've failed. How many times have we failed? How many tens of thousands of laws have we broken again and again and again? The law doesn't save us. The law works wrath. The practical outcome of the law of Moses was to condemn, not save. It's a mirror to show us how we really are. Amen. I remember in the book of Exodus, it talks about those who went to Mount Sinai. A friend of mine is, went to Mount Sinai on a, on, a, on a holiday just recently. And they said they went there and they saw the mountain. And when the Israelites were there, the Bible says it, there was thunders and lightnings. And the book of Hebrews says, for our God is a consuming fire. Would you really want to stand before a holy God and be judged for your sins? Not me. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I, want, I don't want to take that hiding. No. Absolutely not. Amen. The law cannot save us. Amen. That's why it says in verse 16, Therefore, because of the fact that the law works, works wrath, it is of faith that it might be by grace. The great thing about faith is it brings us into God's favor. Amen. Not works. <laughs> faith. You look at Romans cha uh, Hebrews chapter 11, it says, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. I, I haven't found in my Bible, maybe you can point it out to me, the chapter that says, by works, by works, by works, by works, by works. By faith. Amen. By faith, uh, all the different people, Abraham, Moses, they chose, uh, Moses chose affliction and to suffer with the children of God rather than the riches of Egypt. By faith. Faith brings us into the favor of God. He says, therefore is our faith that it might be by grace. I like that song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. Saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. I like grace. I, I like grace. I really do. In fact, my eternal destiny depends on grace. Nothing else. Nothing I could do. Therefore is our faith that it might be by grace. Now, it wasn't just by faith, by grace to Abraham. But look at this. It says, to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. All those who believe like Abraham are the seed of Abraham by faith. Amen. It says, might be, uh, might be sure to all the seed, not to that which is only of the, as of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all, as it is written, I've made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the quick and who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as those as though they were. God brings us to faith, and that promise leads to believing in that promise to salvation. We are of the seed of Abraham by faith, because like Abraham, we believe God. Now, so I've heard this said before, and it's not quite right. And I'll, I'll explain the reason why. Some people will say, well, the people today look back to the cross, and that's how we're saved. We're looking back to the cross. And the people in the Old Testament, they look forward to the cross, and that's how they were saved. But that's not quite right. Because many of the people, according to uh, First Peter, didn't understand everything about what was going to come. But they believed God. 
It wasn't that people in the Old Testament looked forward to the cross and so believed. It's that they believed God and God who saw the cross in eternity accepted their faith. And on that basis, they were saved. Abraham believed God and it was imputed to him. He was given righteousness by faith. That promise was received. It says, who, uh, uh, who against hope, believed in hope. It's so significant, this promise of Isaac to Abraham. Because it illustrates what God can do to those who believe. Now, you and I have not seen the Lord Jesus Christ. I know there are some preachers who've said they've seen Jesus. Uh, one of them was talking about a 60 foot high Jesus uh, in a certain university. And I'm like, we've not seen Jesus. Amen. Remember, Jesus said, blessed are those who believe and who have not yet seen. Amen. I've had people come up to me and say this. Well, you're just depending on that Bible. They're right. <laughs> well, you, you don't know for sure. You could, you could be wrong. But you see, it's not that I'm wrong. It's who I'm trusting. Amen. I'm trusting in God. Yeah. And I believe if I'm trusting in God, the only way I can go to hell if God is, if, is if God could go to hell. Because I'm following him. Where he goes, I go. My faith is not in me. My faith is in him. This promise was given. Abraham says, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Not just the physical seed, Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, and Israel, but the spiritual seed of those who believe then, who believe now, and who will believe in the future. Amen. We're all, as, as Debbie likes to sing that song, and if you've never seen her do that, Father Abraham has many sons. Many sons has Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Everyone in heaven who's saved is going to be a child of Abraham. By faith. You see, we're all, all the nations who will be saved are saved through that seed. And the start of that promise was Isaac leading to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a distinction here between those who, to, to, before whom he believed. He, he believed in hope against hope. Some of my relatives say that to me. Well, pfft. you've just got, you've, I got one, one brother says, God, God is your job. <laughs> they said to me, God is your job. I said to him, God is my life. Amen. He's everything. Yeah. He's, he's not just a, he's your job. <laughs> well, you're, you're just trusting that God, aren't you? Who, who do you think you are trusting God? <laughs> Well, he's God. Amen. <laughs> he can do anything. Amen. Well, who does he think he is? He's God. Well, wait till I see him. I'll tell him a thing or two. No, you're going to be flat in your face. Amen. He believed in hope against hope. And the world will say to us, you're a fool. You're an idiot. What are you doing reading that book? How can you, how can you believe the Bible? Don't you know... <laughs> It's full of contradictions. And I always say, ah, great, show me one. Amen. And not one person has come up to say, uh, I think it's here. I said, have you read it? No, but it's full of contradictions. Really? Show me one. He believed in hope against hope. Hundred-year-old guy, God said, I'm going I'm to show you the validity of my promise based on your faith that I'm going to give you Isaac, your son, through whom the Messiah will come and he will bless the whole world. See, this is why Abraham is so important. His faith was put into action by believing God and following his will. There's an old saying says, if, if, if your faith talks, your faith should walk. If your walk doesn't match your talk, then don't talk. Yeah. Something like that. Verse 18. I love this verse. Who against hope believed in hope they might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And notice this. And being not weak in faith, 
he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither the, the deadness of Sarah's womb. I love this verse. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. He staggered not. You ever seen a man staggering, or a woman staggering for that, these matters, these days? They're all over the place. Yeah. You, know, you know why they're staggering? Because they're not in control of their body. Amen. Yeah, that's good. The Bible says, uh, Be not drunk with wine, whereas X says, But be filled with the Spirit. Abraham was filled with the Spirit. He staggered not. Amen. He didn't waver. He believed not because he was able, because his body was dead. Have, have you ever seen a hundred year old person? <laughs> You ever seen somebody who's 190 years old? All wrinkly and all the rest of it? He didn't look at his body and say, well, I can do that. He said he staggered not. But he was convinced what God could do. He could have said, I'm just too old for that. Sarah's all shriveled up like a prune. She's too old. He refused to listen to reason. I'm sure when he went into that tent and saw Sarah, Sarah tried to talk him out of it. Don't be a fool. I hear this all the time. I've heard it in my own family, and it's funny. Uh, they say to me, well, I can't afford to have children. Have you ever seen those calculators, how much it costs to raise a child? It's like hundreds of thousands. I can't afford that. Sarah probably said, you must be joking. We should be taking it easy and go and retire. Buy a villa in Spain and just take it easy. <laughs> Children, are you mad? He refused, he refused to look at reality. We walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. We walk by whom, whom, we, whom we cannot see, not by what we can see. A lot of times in our life, we, we walk as far as we can go. What we can do. Well, I can do that. But that's not faith. If you only go as far in your Christian life as you can go, in your own strength and own power, that's not faith. Faith is when you get to the end of that, and you make a... And I was talking to this guy yesterday, James was his name, pray for James, by the way. And he said, I need to make that leap of faith. And I said to him, yeah, but who are you leaping to? If you're leaping to yourself and you're, and you, well, I need to change my life. And he said, well, I, I, I'm not, I, I, my, my temper is less than it used to be. So I'm, I'm making a good godly change. And I said, well, that's good, but that's not faith. Amen. He refused to look at reality. His eyes were on the promises of God. Can you imagine this old couple as they prepared for the birth of their son? <laughs> going, going around to, to the places, I'm going to need a crib. I'm going to need a pram. And they probably said, "What? Uh, who in your family is having a baby? And a hundred-year-old guy with a nine-year-old woman, with, with probably with his Zimmer, he walks along and says, we're going to have a son. He didn't look at reality. He looked at faith. Amen. You see, the point God was trying to make is that the reach of grace is far more than the reach of the law. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to do. He was fully persuaded. Amen. Fully. Amen. He jumped, you know. I remember my first parachute jump Oof. in the army. It was not out of a plane, it was out of a balloon. And jumping out of planes is easy. <laughs> Gravity does everything. But it does in a balloon too. But anyway, you, you, <laughs> you go, we went up in this balloon in Aldershot Common. And it goes up really slowly. And there was like four of us in this cage with a metal bar in front. That was it. And we had our parachutes on and, and uh, we went up really slowly and got up there and they secured it at 800 feet. And the, the jump master says, come forward. And I was number one. 
So he rolled up the bar, and there was a big crowd down there, by the way, all watching us, because they wanted to see someone have a problem. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so there was a big crowd down there. He come forward, and he came forward right to the edge, and you had your, your main shoot, your, your reserve right here. Mine's had dummy written in it. I don't know why. I thought it was my name. But anyway, you, so you do like this, and, and you, you say, okay, red right on, go. And that's, that's what they, they taught you. And what you do, normally you're supposed to step out boldly and go. But I kind of slithered out the edge. <laughs> and I went, Phew! straight down. And they, they, it's everything they do in the army, they give you a drill. And so you're supposed to go out, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, check canopy. And if you've no parachute, you pull the reserve, you know, because you've only got three seconds, because if, if you don't, you've got about five seconds, five, six seconds before you hit the ground. And it takes a couple of seconds for the shoot to deploy, so you've got to do it quick. And I remember looking up and saying, oh, yes, the parachute, woo <laughs> And you float nicely to the ground. By faith, we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. One day we're going to see him. And what a joy that's going to be. Amen. Faith glorifies God. Abraham was pleased to put his faith in God. Look at verse number 21. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And the, now notice this, and therefore, what therefore means because of this, look back, it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Because Abraham believed God, God imputed righteousness to him. In other words, if you like, he put righteousness into his account. His account before that was empty. In fact, it was in minus. But God credited him with righteousness. So that was great for Abraham, wasn't it? Wonderful. Is it just for him? Look at verse 22. Now, or verse 23. Now, it was not written for his sake alone, it was imputed unto him. Now, notice this. But for us also. So what God did in Abraham's life also affects our life. To whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus from the dead. So in other words, the same faith that Abraham had is the same faith that saves us. Faith. Not faith and works. Not faith and the law but faith. The, the law was 500 years in the future. So the same faith that saved Abraham is the same faith that saves us is the same faith that will save people in the future in the tribulation because we're all going to be children of Abraham. But for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus from the dead who was delivered for our offenses. Now notice this. And I was raised again for our justification. Jesus died for our sins. Amen. That's it. And we need faith to be saved. This is the blessing of Abraham. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons said, Father Abraham, I am one of them, I saw you. So let's just praise the Lord. Faith alone saves. Faith alone in Christ saves. Not faith and trying my best. Being as good as I can. I'm a good boy. I'll get to heaven. Or you're a good boy and I'll just get on your coattails. No, personal faith in a personal Savior. God be merciful to me, a sinner. That's what saved Abraham. Faith. That's what saved David. We saw that earlier. And everyone who was saved in the Old Testament was saved by faith. Hebrews 11, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. Faith alone, Amen. in Christ alone, mm. saves us. Thank God for that blessing, the blessing of faith. Mm. People say, well, I'm, I'm just, I, my faith's in the Lord, that's all I have. That's all you need. Amen. Faith alone. Yeah. We sang that song, free from the law, O happy condition. Christ hath redeemed us once for all. Mm. All you have to do to be saved is place your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and the moment, the instant you believe, you're saved. And the righteousness of Christ is imputed to you Amen. by faith. That's a blessing. That's a great thing. 
That encourages me to go out to people and tell them, if you simply believe, if you simply trust what Jesus did, like Abraham, like David, like Moses and all the rest of them, if you simply believe and trust, God will save you. You don't have to do anything. What a blessing. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for this study in your word, Lord, looking at Abraham and the faith. Lord, I, I like that verse. It says he staggered not. He, he, he was fully persuaded. Lord, I thank you for faith in my life. I thank you for the faith in the life of the, the people gathered here today. We thank you, Lord, we're saved by faith alone, in Christ alone. Help us, Lord, to take that message to this world that people can be saved no matter their sins, no matter their religion, no matter anything else, but if they simply believe and trust you, they can be saved. Bless us now as we have this time of invitation. We do ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.